Graubünden to the east of Switzerland, an alpine paradise. But for animals, winter here is a real challenge. These images are enough to excite the hearts of skiers and snowboarders. A picture book winter with sunshine, biting cold and plenty of snow. Graubünden is a winter wonderland. But fun on the slopes and après ski pleasures are only one aspect of a Swiss winter. For some, winter in the Alps can be genuinely challenging. It piles snow and ice mercilessly over the landscape. Without proper preparation, survival will be difficult. These cold, rocky valleys and inhospitable forests are still wildlife habitats, even at sub-zero temperatures and in lethal winter storms. Astonishingly, for a highland region animal, the ibex doesn't actually like snow. It will go out of its way to avoid it. But in very snowy winters, that's nigh on impossible. In addition to frozen food, an itchy winter coat is a constant irritation in the cold season. But the ibex can always find a good solution. As for smaller, more delicate or sensitive creatures, they are best advised to take refuge under the snow. Despite snow being nothing more than frozen water, it actually works as a kind of thermal insulation. Nature can be a ruthless killer, but it can also be an inventive lifesaver. It offers plenty of options for animals to survive the winter. Hibernation is the marmot's survival strategy. They retreat to their burrows to sleep for around six months. During their hibernating sleep, their body temperature sinks to a mere five to six degrees centigrade. From time to time, they awaken so they can warm up. Otherwise, they would freeze to death. Some creatures don't sleep, they simply stop all movement. Even the most delicate summer beauties can survive the winter like this, such as the brimstone butterfly. It's an alcoholic. Its body's own sugar alcohol, glycerine, helps it to survive the winter. This heap is where an entire kingdom spends the winter. Workers, larvae, and of course, a queen. Ants also spend the cold months hibernating. Many survival experts spend winter well protected underground or in hollows they chew into dead wood. The cold is not the only danger for them. In a warm winter, fungi and bacteria could decompose them like rotting wood. Outside the protection of the cave, the temperature can fall to minus 30 degrees centigrade. The nights can get even colder.
but even an internal anti-freeze system or cozy cave can be ineffective against such extreme conditions. If ice crystals form inside their bodies, the cells burst, and that's the end of the hibernator. A sea of snow, ice, and rock, the peaks of the Bündner Alps thrust majestically up to 4,000 meters into the sky. It's not easy to survive winters here, but animals are expert at adapting. And while some are hibernating, others are already thinking about the next generation. It's mating season for the ibex. Although they should be saving their energy, there are constant skirmishes between the males. A blow just one sixtieth of the force of these would fracture a human skull. But ibex skulls are made up of movable plates with a cartilaginous buffering substance between them that cushions the blows. Winter ranking fights are mostly playful wrestling matches. The males already know who is the strongest and may therefore mate. That was established back in summer when they were all well fed. In a wintry mountain world, there are very few animals about. Most are hiding from the cold or have dug themselves in underground. It makes this season seem empty, lifeless, and isolated. The only birds encountered are the ones that usually stay behind, birds of prey like the eagle. The migratory birds have all gone to spend the winter in the south. Only expert adaptation specialists can survive here, and those who have help. In a hard winter with permafrost, freezing rain, or a closed blanket of snow, bird feeders find grateful beneficiaries. Domestic birds, such as tits, would probably survive without food, despite the harsh conditions. Anyone standing around in the snow for too long gets frozen feet. The tits are no exception. The feeding of songbirds is a controversial issue. In many cases, it supports species that are already very common. The nuthatch often wedges its food in crevices in tree bark where it can crack things open. Insects in summer and seeds and nuts in winter. This squirrel is lucky. It lives in a coniferous forest where food is available year-round, so it can afford to be lazy during summer. Unlike its relatives that live in deciduous forests, they have to store their food supplies. One third of Switzerland is covered in forest. That's around half a billion trees. Some 16% of these grow in Graubünden. Forests are so important to the Swiss that they have a unique law. Whatever was once forest may never be cleared.
because forest means protection against avalanches and landslides. Forests prevent damage of up to four billion Swiss francs every year. Some 25,000 animal species rely on forest habitats. Switzerland's largest wild animal is also mainly to be found here. A hundred and fifty years ago, the red deer was extinct in Switzerland. Today, there are around 35,000 of them here. The first to return were fugitives from stag hunts in Austria. This herd of deer has found a south-facing slope where they will stay all winter. Their survival strategy? Save energy. To protect themselves from the cold, they grow a warm top coat of long fur. They also lower their body temperature, shrink their digestive organs, lower their pulse, and most of the time, stand around doing nothing. Some forests in this region are rather special. They are Swiss stone pine forests and very rare. Only 1% of the forest in Graubünden consists of stone or arola pines. In Engadin, they're called the Queen of the Alps. The Swiss author Alois Schniedrich wrote, the stone pine forest is the adornment of the mountains whose bald skull it decorates with incense perfumed curls. The stone pine is an astonishing tree. It alone can brave temperatures of minus 45 degrees centigrade and flourishes in an area in which winter rains for most of the year. The stone pine's life takes place in slow motion. In its first 40 years, it bears not a single pine cone. When they do appear, they take three years to ripen, and the stone pine can live for over 1,000 years. Below the forest, a mountain stream winds through the valley. Dippers are mostly found near fast-running water. This one is hunting for food in the icy stream. Despite the low temperatures, the stream itself is actually teeming with life. Time and again, it dives for prey, mainly insect larvae, and it's a very successful hunter. The dipper can close its nostrils and ears to keep out the water, and it can see very well underwater. Its feathers also stay waterproof due to constant greasing. So nature has equipped it with perfect diving gear. In Graubünden, strange tracks may sometimes be seen in the snow. Since the mid-90s, it's been back in Switzerland. Canis lupus, the bane of Little Red Riding Hood, the fairy tale monster, the big bad wolf. 
anyone following the acrimonious discussion surrounding its return might think there were hundreds of wolves roaming Switzerland, and yet there are only around 30 in three packs. Some of the so-called wolves that have been spotted were actually dogs. Even wolf researchers hardly ever get to see the object of their research programs. To study wolves' behavior or film them, one often has to rely on wildlife parks or zoos. For this alleged monster, too, winter is a season of hunger and hardship. The long nights and low temperatures are really challenging for wolves. So the valleys can seem like a paradise to them. In the cold season, humans keep their livestock in pleasantly warm stalls, stocked with feed. They're protected from the thieves lurking outside. Should the Swiss wilderness be home to Europe's biggest predator? Many experts believe there is actually room for not just 30, but up to 150 wolves in the Swiss mountains. Others maintain that wolves have no place in such a densely populated country. Which will triumph, the interest of humans or nature? Time will tell how the controversy is resolved. Winter in Graubünden, no easy time for animals. Cold, snow and shortage of food mean that only experts can survive here. And so this rough, inhospitable yet beautiful mountain world is truly full of life, even in winter.